Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel, Do Ministry Gaming, and today we are going to be doing a guide on Path of Exile's Atlas system, uh, which is a large component of Path of Exile's endgame. Now, this guide will primarily focus on the basics of how the Atlas works, uh, so I won't be covering any type of advanced strategies when it comes to uh, the fastest way to get your watchstones or the fastest way to do your uh, atlas completion or any of that uh, so it really is a guide uh, primarily geared towards the newer player now with that said there is a lot going on in the atlas and a lot of things happening in parallel and some of these mechanics are newly introduced uh, as of last league like the maven mechanic so if you are a seasoned player and you missed a league or two here or there uh, or aren't fully up to speed on how everything works, uh, this could be a guide for you as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So to start, what you see on the screen is what the Atlas looks like. Uh, this is not a completed Atlas, but it does have all of the uh, Atlas mechanics unlocked on it, which I will talk through one at a time. Uh, now, before we do any of that, to unlock the Atlas itself, you do have to complete the game and you have to beat Kitava on Act 10. And then afterwards, there's a couple of, of pretty easy quests that you have to do. So you have to get through all that before you can unlock the Atlas. And once you have, you can access it by pushing the uh, default keybind of G uh, or uh, accessing it through the menu. So the first time you open the Atlas, it's not going to look like this. Uh, pretty much everything's going to be grayed out by a fog of war. And you're going to have to slowly unlock each of the Atlas's mechanics uh, as you play through the Atlas and also uncover the regions and the fog of war. So I'll have time codes in the description below uh, talking through each of the Atlas's mechanics. But I'd say there's about four general things that you need to learn about when it comes to the Atlas. The first is the Atlas itself, which is basically this map and these circles and these dashed lines and these yellow lines and how all of that works. The second mechanic to understand would probably be Cyrus and the Conquerors. Uh, and that is denoted by these circular panels on the Atlas, as well as this uh, giant bar on the left that has slots for these circular objects called watchstones. The third would be the Maven encounters and the Maven fights and the invitations uh, denoted by these bars on top of the circular panels. And the final thing to talk about would be the master missions, which is denoted by the vertical bar here on the right. All right, so the first thing to talk about is the Atlas base itself. Like I say, are the circles and dashed lines and yellow borders. And what these circles are, are they are maps. And what maps are, they are items that you can drop. And when you use them in the map device, they will open an area uh, that you can zone into that has monsters and a boss. And when you kill the boss, you complete the map, okay? Um, and so there are 164 maps total uh, in the Atlas itself as denoted by these numbers here, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But the, I think the first thing we want to talk about is the maps themselves. So I do have here in my stash, this is a premium stash tab that you're looking at. Uh, it is not essential to the game. It is a premium stash tab, so you have to buy it. Uh, but uh, it is a very nice way to organize your maps. Now, maps can range from tier one, which are these, and you can see by the numbers here, all the way up to tier 16. And now, so the difference is that they get harder as you go up in tiers. So a tier one map will have level 68 monsters all the way up to tier 16 maps, which will have level 83 monsters. Now, the first maps that you'll acquire will come from regular drops from the campaign, the regular part of the game. They will start dropping after Act 8. So between Act 8 and Killing Katava, chances are you're going to start to drop a few maps, as well as a couple quests that you do right after Katava, I think will give you a starter map or two. But basically, the maps that you can get starting from Act 8 are all of these Tier 1 maps, which there are four of. You can see this arcade here, Coves, Jungle Valley, and Pen. And if I go back to the Atlas, the four tier one maps are right in the middle. These four corners in the middle here. So this is where you start the Atlas on and everything else, like I said, is gonna be grayed out with a fog of war. So generally speaking, the higher your Atlas and the more completed it is, the better, you know, the more completed it is, the higher level maps you can do, which have the higher level drops. 
uh, the higher level boss encounters you can do that also have higher level drops, et cetera, et cetera. So for the purpose of this video, uh, we're going to be talking about it as if we want to complete it as much as possible. And we're not going to be talking about any type of very specific or niche strategies, if there even are out there, or that involve uh, lower Atlas completion. Now you start with the first four in the corner here. So you need to start with those and complete those. And the way to run a map is you take the map that you have. Uh, and these maps are craftable, by the way. You can, you know, make them blue with alterations, uh, sorry, transmutations and alterations. Uh, you can make them rare by orbs of alchemy, and you can also vol them as well. And there is a purpose to doing all that, but I'll explain that in a second here. The first thing you need to know is to run a map is that uh, you need to put it in this little map device here. Uh, which you should have gotten as part of doing the quests when you complete the game and you can put that in your hideout uh, or access it from another area uh, and you just put the map in and you activate with one of these modifiers uh, and you activate and that basically opens six portals to an area that you can zone into and you have to clear these areas all right, so when you kill the boss of a map you'll have quote unquote completed it but there are different levels of completing a map so um, if you look actually here at the Jungle Valley, for example, uh, you can do the map, then you can do it with these bonus objectives on it. So when you complete the map, the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna take an empty uh, icon, map icon. So for example, this self events is a map I have not completed yet. It will take this empty circular icon, and if I complete it, it will fill it in with one of these map icons, denoting that I have completed it. And then uh, on top of that, there are bonus objectives. So in this case, the Jungle Valley, the bonus objective is to kill the boss of magic or higher version of this map. So like I said, you can uh, roll those maps with um, transmutation orbs uh, or alchemy orbs, et cetera, et cetera. So if it's blue or higher, I'll have completed the bonus objective for this map. And then there's also an awakening bonus, which is to complete this map at tier 14 and awakening level one, which are things I will talk about when we talk about the uh, conqueror section. Uh, but for now, just know that there's two additional bonuses that you can do for each map, which tie to these objective bonuses down here. So what these bonus objectives do is that there, there's two levels. So the first one is the, the regular bonus, like uh, you saw in the jungle valley here, which is the first line. The regular bonus um, gives you a chance for maps to drop one tier higher. So 1% per bonus object you've completed. Um, and you can see I've done here, for example, 64 out of 164 maps, I've completed the bonus objective on, which means I get a 64% chance for maps to drop one tier higher. So anything that would drop a tier one would now drop a tier two, if it has a 64% chance to drop tier two, and um, a tier two map can have a chance to drop tier three, et cetera, et cetera. Now the awakening bonus objective will give you a percent uh, additional chance to receive an Atlas mission when you complete the map, which is this bar on the right here, the master missions, which I'll explain later in the video, and also a percent increased effect of modifiers on your non-unique maps, which means this, your maps, for example, this arcade map here that I have that's blue, uh, all the modifiers on it, like 25% less effect of curses on monsters will be, um, increase that effect will be increased but also the item quantity and all that will increase as well so what i'll say is when you're starting out i wouldn't worry too much about the awakening bonus objective quite yet uh, a lot of these awakening bonus objectives require you to do the maps on tier 14 to 16 uh, and so it's something you do really when you've progressed quite nicely through the atlas already and by that time you should be pretty familiar with the mechanics and how everything works uh, and so that should be uh it should make a lot more sense to you at that point but to start out uh, i wouldn't worry too much about it uh, the bonus objectives is something that's very reasonable to complete uh, as you go through the atlas for example these uh, initial maps that you're doing you're just doing them in the blue version which is absolutely doable so i would recommend uh, as you progress to the atlas to at least complete the regular bonus alongside with completing the map now in order to progress through the atlas as in to start getting other maps you need to drop them in the maps that you're running so like say the first maps that you're going to get are these tier one maps from playing through the game but everything else you're going to have to start to drop from these maps by playing maps on the atlas so from the first ones that you get, let's take, for example, this jungle valley here. It's a tier one map. 
you have to start to get the maps surrounding it in this map. And this is where you need to understand how map drops actually work. So um, when you're doing a map, the white monsters in the maps will drop the tier of the maps that are the same or lower than the map that you're running. So a tier one map, well, the white monsters can only drop tier one maps. If you're running a tier two map, white monsters can drop tier two or tier one maps. Okay, so, so uh, at the level or below. Uh, the blue and the yellow monsters, so the, the magic and the rare monster packs in the maps have the chance to drop the map tier plus one. So in a tier one map, for example, this jungle valley, a magic or rare monster will be have a chance to drop a tier two map. And that's where you start to um, go up in the tiers of the maps. And then finally, the boss of the map has a chance to drop the map tier plus two. All right, so there is a second set of rules that the map drops have to obey as well. And I'm gonna illustrate that by talking about the glacier map up here, which is a tier three map. Basically the maps that can drop from this map, if I ran it, is anything that is directly connected to the map by these dashed lines. So there are five maps connected to these to this glacier map. I can drop any of those as long as they obey the rules as well. So uh, for example, the Fowl Cathedral, from the Cabins, and you can see even the uncompleted ones, as long as they're connected to this map, I can drop. So Forking River, I can drop. And because it's a tier three and tier three, I can drop it from anything in the glacier map. But the Crystal Ore, on the other hand, because it's tier four, it's one tier higher, right? It can only drop from Magic and Rare Packs or the boss. So it will still obey the level of rules in terms of the map drops but um, that's how you can get uncompleted maps is by doing the map adjacent to it the other maps that can drop from this glacier map if i ran it is anything else on the atlas that i've completed and also obeys the rules okay so um, for example this basilica map can drop in the glacier map as well because it's a tier three map it is completed it doesn't have to be connected to it as long as it's present and completed elsewhere on the atlas and obeys the drop rules uh, it has a chance to drop so this mud geyser arcade etc etc so just a couple more things to talk about the base map here the um first is these yellow ribbons uh, basically, these just outline these different regions. There's eight different regions on the atlas, and they're labeled, so you can actually see them. For example, the top left corner here, this cluster of maps is in a region called Haywark Hamlet. Then there's Turns End, Lex Proxima, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the atlas is broken down into eight map regions, and this has some relevance to it uh, when we start talking about the Conquerors and Maven. So just the last thing to quickly note about the base atlas itself is that the back to my match map stash tab here um, again these are 16 tiers of maps and they are colored differently so the first five tiers are colored white the next five tiers six to ten are colored yellow and the maps themselves are as well and then finally the last six tiers of the maps are colored red and basically what that means is that um, white maps you need to complete um, in magic form so blue in order to get the first level of bonus on these maps. Now the yellow maps, they're pretty much color coded. As you imagine, is that you have to complete the maps as a rare map. So alchemy orb in order to complete the first level of bonus. And then finally, uh, um, the red maps, you will have to complete corrupted as in a vol orb uh, in order to complete the first level of bonus. And you also probably see here that the uh, base atlas itself is only white maps as you start out. So everything shown here is tier one to five maps and all those white colored maps. Uh, the way to get to the yellow maps and the red maps is by um, the conqueror mechanic, uh, which I will talk about right away here. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about the conquerors and Cyrus mechanic. Uh, so the first thing to know is that as you start to progress through the atlas, uh, these circular placards are not in each of these map regions. You have to unlock them. And basically the way to do that is as you're playing through the maps in the regions, occasionally uh, you will um, spawn an extra portal at the end of the map. After you kill the boss, you need to go into the portal and talk to Xana. And when you do that, you will unlock the circular placard for that map region. And you have to do that for each of the eight map regions. And uh, these are called the citadels.
All right, so the next thing you need to know is that there are bosses called conquerors that you're gonna have to fight uh, as you progress through the atlas. And there are four of them, uh, one for each color. So red, green, blue, and yellow. So they are different bosses with different boss mechanics and different uh, special boss drops. Now killing these conquerors is also gonna drop these circular objects over here called the watchstones and you can house them in this store space on the left here. Uh, but basically there are actually 32 watchstones that you can collect. So there's four bosses. So you actually have to fight each of these four bosses eight times as you progress through the Atlas. So by the end of it, you are going to be quite familiar with the fights and pretty familiar with how to spawn and kill them. And even after you get all the watchstones, you can continue to spawn them and kill them for the loot as well as um, spawning the fifth boss called Cyrus, which I'll talk about in a bit here. Hopefully it's pretty obvious, you know, by the way the storage and what have you works, but uh, each area has four watchstones uh, of the eight areas, which means in each area you need to kill all four conquerors in order to get the areas for watchstones. All right, so what you do with these watchstones when you collect them, and I'll talk about how to collect them in a bit here, is that you take them and you put them into the circular placards in each of the map regions. So I'm gonna put one into turns end here and show you what's gonna happen. Now, before I do, I want you to notice that all the maps in this region are white. They are all tier one to three. And I'll just point out a couple maps here. Coves will be tier one, that's the first map. Uh, this mud geyser here is a tier three map. And this temple map is a tier three map. Now, what happens when you put one washstone in is that the maps inside the map region that you have the washstone in all change. Okay, so the maps that still exist uh, from the base map, so the coves, you can see has gone up in tiers now. So the coves was a tier one map, is now a tier four map. That mud geyser was a tier three map, is now a tier six map. And as you remember, the tier six is now a yellow map. And that temple map was a tier three map, is now a tier six map. So all the maps in the region have gone up in tiers. Not only that, but you're also going to introduce new maps into the map region. So this silo map, tier six map, did not exist when there was no washstone here. Okay, I take the washstone out. There is no silo map. That silo map was new to one watchstone. Okay, and then you'll notice again. So basically, every time you put a new watchstone in, or increase the watchstone level, you're gonna increase the map tiers of the maps, but also introduce new maps into the region. So if I put a second watchstone in, you can see now that the coves is a tier eight now, the mud geyser is a tier 10, a temple is tier 10 now, that silo is still here, which was tier six is now tier nine, but then there's another brand new map, I think this is new, Anyway, the Desert Springs, which is a tier nine. So, so as you put watchstones in, the, the existing map tiers will go up and then you're gonna introduce new maps into the pool. So essentially this is how you're going to uh, progress your way through the Atlas and increase the map tiers of, uh, of the maps beyond the base map uh, tiers of one to five, all these white maps, is that you have to put watchstones in so that you can get the yellow maps, the new yellow maps, as well as um, the higher tiers of the old maps in order to progress your way through to tier 16. Now, uh, one thing to note is that all the rules around map drops still apply in the Atlas, which means you're gonna have to systematically place these watchstones in a way so that you obey all the map drop rules in order to drop those higher tier maps. So the transition between white maps to yellow maps and from yellow maps to red maps sometimes can be quite tricky. Now, the other way you can also attain some of these maps and help smoothen out the progress of your Atlas is you can buy maps from Xana. Xana is the uh, Atlas NPC and you can acquire her. Eventually, when you run the maps in the Atlas, you're eventually gonna run into her and she's gonna offer you a mission. And once you complete the mission, you can put her uh, into your hideout and you can have her available. And um, what you can do is you can purchase maps from her and these maps will reset, I think once a day or every time that you complete one of her missions. But anyway, uh, you can purchase maps from her and oftentimes she'll sell maps that are even higher tier than the ones that you've completed or sell you maps that are uncompleted. So you can see if I hold down advanced tooltips, a lot of these maps I haven't completed. So another way to get them would be to buy them from Xana. 
So just a couple more things to talk about. The first is these watchstones, although they are, you know, associated with each area in terms of acquiring them, uh, they are not specific to that area. As in this turns watchstone, this turns end watchstone. I can socket in Haywire Hamlet. I can socket this in Glenar Cairns. I can put this anywhere. Okay. Even though I got it in turns end, I can put that anywhere. So you can manage your watchstones that way as you get them and put them into areas where you need the maps to drop. All right, so now we're going to talk about how you actually get these watchstones. How do you actually spawn these conquerors that you have to fight in order to get these watchstones? Now, um, there are 32 watchstones, so you have to fight 32, con 32 conquerors in order to get them. Okay, but um, the first four conquerors have to spawn in the outside four corner regions. So you're going to start your atlas out in the middle from these tier one maps, and you're actually going to start to progress your way out. Now, um, as you complete turns end and Glenar Cairns and these four inner regions, you will not see a conquer. It's when you make your way out to these corner regions that the first four are going to spawn. So let's say you make your way out to Haywar Hamlet, this top left corner here. Uh, what's going to happen is as you're doing maps here, eventually um, after you complete one, you're going to exit the, the map and then you're going to see that the map is shaded in in a particular color, red, green, blue, or yellow, depending on the conqueror that has spawned there. Now uh, at that point, you're going to come talk to this Officer Kirak guy. Uh, who is someone that you've been talking to throughout this Atlas progress uh, process and you can have in your um, hideout if you wish. But you need to talk to Officer Kirk. There will be a quest that tells you to do so too. So it should be pretty obvious. Now, once you talk to Officer Kirak, he should have a new line uh, available in his menu that says travel to the Citadel of X, X being the name of the conqueror, uh, which is highlighted in a different color text. So it should be pretty obvious. Now, I don't quite remember if it's not officer Kirak, he'll go tell you to talk to Xana and Xana will have that option in her menu. But if it is, she'll, he'll tell you to go talk to Xana. But either way, one of the two will have that new line. And basically you click on it, travel to the Citadel. What it'll do is it'll open a new map. So six new portals around your map device. You uh, enter the map, you complete the map as usual, go kill the boss. And when you kill the boss, a new portal is gonna open inside the map there right after you kill the boss. And you go into that portal and it'll take you to the conquer fight and you kill the conquer. And when you kill the conquer, you will get your very first watchstone, which you can house in the storage thing here if you'd like, or immediately put it into one of the map region's um, uh, watchstone sockets if you'd like. Now, from there, that will be your very first watchstone, and then you're going to have to do the other three corners. So you're going to have to make your way out in this example, for example, uh, to New Vestir, and you're going to have to run maps there until the same thing happens, kill the Conqueror there, then go to Lyra Arthane, which is the bottom right corner, and then go to Lex Idora. So you have to do the four corners first. And once you do the first four, you'll have four watchstones, and then from that point on, Conquerors can spawn anywhere in any of the map regions. And then there's a couple of rules to follow after that. All right, so here is an example of what the Atlas looks like when you have a conqueror spawned. As you can see in Lex Proxima, uh, the whole zone is highlighted in this red color. Uh, and that signifies that there is a conqueror present in the region. And you also see over here on the left, a little progress bar has spawned. And it also says regions occupied by Baron, the Crusader, who is the red conqueror. Now, in this case, this uh, um, progress bar has three blocks on it, but this can vary in size. It can be five blocks, it can be seven blocks, it can be nine blocks long. And basically what that means is you have to run the, that many number of maps in this region now in order to fight the conqueror. Now, there is a few rules around it. The maps that you run have to be of a certain uh, tier in order to you know, progress this bar. Uh, and that is related to, you know, the number of watchstones that need to be in the region. Um, and then also, uh, there's, if this bar was longer, you'll see some gray blocks and some blue blocks. So the gray blocks just are regular if you run the map. And then anytime you hit a blue block, the map will have extra monsters in it, um, of the type of the, of the conquer. And so it just has some more monsters and are a little more difficult to complete. But long story short, however number many of blocks show up on the progress bar is now the number of maps you need to do in order to actually fight the conqueror in the region. 
All right, so I've run the three maps required to spawn the Conqueror now. And as you can see, the Citadel has disappeared. Uh, there is now also a quest marker on top of Officer Kirak, which will show you now that the uh, Conqueror has spawned. And all you have to do now is talk to Xana. It says here, travel to Baron Citadel in that different color text. You click that and it will open a map and I'll have to do the map, kill the boss, and then there will be a portal to the actual Conqueror fight itself. All right, so every time you kill a Conqueror, it is going to show up in the middle of the Atlas here, and it says Crusader defeated, Warlord defeated. So in my case, I need to kill two more Conquerors uh, to complete a cycle, so to speak, and then once I do, they'll all reset, and you can kill them again. Now, each region, you can only kill the Conqueror and get the Watchstone from that region uh, once per Conqueror, right? So if I actually go to Lex Proxima, which is the region I'm working on right now, you can see I've obtained the red Watchstone and the yellow Watchstone, but the green and the blue Watchstones I have not obtained, okay? And it also says number of Watchstones required to spawn this Conqueror is four. What that means is I actually have to have four Watchstones socketed in this region in order to even spawn a, a conquer here to fight and in this region i'll have the green one and the blue one left to get now if i look at another region like lex ejoris i have obtained the green one but uh i have not obtained any of the other ones however in this particular cycle i cannot get the red one and i cannot get the yellow one anymore because they have spawned already and I've defeated them already in another region. So until they reset, which is all four dead, uh, I can't spawn them anymore. Now, however, I still can't get the blue one in this region if I wanted to. And same thing applies. I would need to have four watchstones in this region to get it. So if I did that, then I won't be able to do it in Lex Proxima anymore until the next cycle. So um, just to show you a completed zone here, you know, in turns end, I've got all four of my watchstones. So you actually do have to plan a little bit uh, in terms of how you spawn the conquerors uh, in each region to make sure that when you spawn one in the region, you can actually get its watchstone. It's possible to actually spawn one in the region and in a region that's not capable of getting the watchstone. For example, like I say, I still have green and blue to do. However, I've gotten all four watchstones in turn's end already. Now, if I put four watchstones in turn's end and actually spawn one of the conquerors here, I can do it and I can kill it, but then I won't get the watchstone. So if you're in the process of collecting the watchstones, just be aware of that, that, um, you know, make sure that you're spawning a conqueror in a place that doesn't already have the watchstone obtained. All right, and then just one final minor note is that you can see here, uh, again, it says number of watchstones required to spawn the Conqueror is four. Okay, so basically what happens is after you get the first four watchstones, the next set of four Conquerors will require one watchstone to spawn. Okay, so you have to put one watchstone in whichever region that you want to spawn the next four Conquerors. And then the four Conquerors after that will require two watchstones to spawn. The next Conquerors will require three watchstones to spawn. The next Conquerors will require four watchstones to spawn. And after four, after that, every time now, you're going to need four, four watchstones in a region to spawn all the way up until you have completed all 32 watchstones. All right, so that should be everything you need to know about the Conquerors and the Cyrus mechanic. Uh, it does get a little bit confusing to start, but you will quickly get the hang of it as you progress through the Atlas. Now on to the next mechanic, which is the Maven mechanic. Uh, I do have a separate video for that already posted on my channel. I will link that in the description below. Uh, details the Maven mechanic uh, for beginners. So uh, I will just refer you to that rather than going through that in this video. So you can go ahead and check that out in the description below. All right, so the last thing to talk about related to the Atlas is on the right here. These are the master missions. There are five masters, Einhar, Alva, Nyko, June, and Xana. If you're not familiar with some of these league mechanics and these master missions, uh, I do have some videos uh, on these league mechanics posted as well. So you can go ahead and check them out on my channel. But otherwise, uh, these five particular missions, uh, uh, masters will have missions and you can see for each master, there's three colors, white, yellow, and red. And so that should be pretty self-explanatory. White is related to the white maps, yellow for the yellow maps and red for the red maps.
Now, once you have the master missions, what you can do with them is basically run them alongside your map. So if you go to your map device uh, and put in your map, you'll notice down here there is five circular wheels, one for each of the masters of those masters. And if you have the mission corresponding to the color of the map that you're running, so for example, I'm running a white map here, uh, you can use alongside the map uh, one of these masters, only one. So if I picked Einhard, then uh, when I run this map, it will also have the bestiary league mechanic, uh, Alva is the temple mechanic, etc., etc. So uh, these masters will show up in your maps and offer you whatever league mechanic they have to offer. So the way to actually get these master missions uh, is that once a day, you're going to get one mission from each master uh, based on the color of the map that you last ran before the reset. Okay, so if you last ran a yellow map before you logged out for the night or before the reset, uh, then one yellow mission from each master is what you're going to get the next day. If you ran a red map, then it'll be one for uh, one red one for each master uh, the next day. Now, the other way to get these master missions is to complete maps. And every time you complete a map, you have a 35% chance to get the master mission, a random master mission of the color of the map that you completed. Now you can enhance this through many ways, like the uh, awakening bonus and the um, Atlas ascendancies and what have you. Uh, but basically, every time you complete a map, you have a chance to get a master mission. All right. So one more thing to talk about is on the uh, bar on the left here, where you're socketing your watch stones for each of the regions. You'll also notice three circular icons. Now, what these icons are is places for you to favorite your maps. And what that means is that once you put a map in the slot, uh, that favorited map will have a higher chance of dropping. Now, before you can do that, you have to unlock the slots first. And uh, as you can see from the tooltip, the first slot is unlocked by completing all the maps in the particular region. So for example, this is Haywark Hamlet. So if I want to unlock that map slot, I will have to complete all the maps in Haywark Hamlet. This will unlock, and now I can put one map from Haywark Hamlet as a favorited map into that slot. Then the second slot is unlocked by completing all the normal bonus objectives in that region. And then finally, the third slot is unlocked by completing all the awakening objectives in that region. Now, once all three are unlocked, you can put the same map into all three slots, uh, which will drastically increase the chance of that particular map dropping. But you can also do an assortment or however which you like. All right, everybody, that should be everything you need to know to at least get started with the Atlas mechanic. Uh, it is very complex as evidenced by this video and there's lots going on. There's a lot of mechanics and a lot of mechanics that run in parallel to each other. Uh, so don't feel bad if uh, this is a little overwhelming uh, to begin with. Uh, I would say, you know, if you're new to the Atlas, just start running maps and things will slowly start to play out. And uh, if you hit something that you don't understand, just refer back to this video and uh, things will slowly start to make sense. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Also stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. Times are in the description below. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.